fact that you have a dollar sign as a dedicated key on this phone just kind of goes to show what kind of target demographic this phone is intended for. What's up guys, it's Justin here, and today I've got a review of possibly one of the most interesting phones of the year, the BlackBerry Key One. So BlackBerry is back here with a new smartphone, and this year it seems to be more of a straightforward approach as to what they wanted to do. I previously checked out the Priv, but with that phone it almost felt as if BlackBerry couldn't decide if it wanted to be a traditional Android phone or a BlackBerry with its keyboard. This year they're back to their roots with a phone that has a full QWERTY keyboard, is very well built, but also runs Android, so you're getting the best of both worlds in this situation. I remember dreaming of a BlackBerry back in the day, but I never had the chance to get one, so it's been a really fun experience being able to use this in the last two weeks and if you guys had a BlackBerry in the past go ahead and leave a comment down below letting me know. So to begin the specs on the BlackBerry Key 1 are a Snapdragon 625 processor with 3 gigs of RAM, a 3505 milliamp hour battery, 32 gigs of storage that is expandable, and also a 12 megapixel camera. When it comes to design, I think BlackBerry has done a good job in trying to resemble their target audience but also what they stand in terms of values in a smartphone. The phone itself is held together by a metal construction that felt very solid throughout. It's relatively seamless but also has a nice and simple characteristic back that has a rubber lining that is dimpled. I think for business people, this phone has a good medium because it is relatively good looking but at the same time not striking to the point where it feels like you're going to break it, but it still has that bold and elegant design characteristic to it and I quite like it for what it is. The phone has a Gorilla Glass 4 front and it weighs in at 180 grams which has a nice balance to it, it feels quite hefty. Unfortunately there is no IP rating on this guy so it isn't officially water resistant and I think a large part in that is for the keyboard as that would be quite difficult to water protect. As for buttons, you're going to find your sleep and power button on the left side, the volume rockers on the right side, and also a programmable custom shortcut button below that. What I like about this is that it is completely customizable unlike Bixby on the Samsung Galaxy S8 shortcut key, so in my case I have it set to Twitter. You have your headphone jack on the top, and on the bottom you have your USB-C Quick Charge 3.0 port for charging and syncing. So in terms of button and port placement, I think they've done a great job because the buttons were very easy to reach and I normally like my headphone jack on the top. With a QWERTY keyboard taking up the entire bottom of the phone, you wouldn't think that this phone would have a fingerprint sensor, but in fact it does, and it's built into the spacebar. For my uses, it worked quite quickly, and this is exactly where I would like my fingerprint sensors, as opposed to it being on the back. Above the keyboard, you have your touch capacitive buttons, and that is one of the things that I didn't like about this phone. From using the keyboard and transitioning over to the display, I found myself accidentally pressing the touch capacitive buttons in between quite often. As a result of the whole layout, this screen is also a 3 to 2 ratio which is pretty awkward so I think by combining the buttons into software buttons it would have worked out much better. Staying on terms with the screen though, it is a 4.5 inch 1620 by 1080 resolution LCD screen. It's overall pretty decent, the colors look good, and the colors are relatively accurate. It does lean a little bit towards a cooler tone, and it isn't the brightest out there from what I've seen, but you have to remember that this phone is not intended for multimedia. But now let's talk about the keyboard, which is its most compelling feature and probably why you're looking or buying this phone in the first place. I have to tell you, this is a very good keyboard, and especially if you've had a BlackBerry in the past, you're going to be able to type so fast on this thing. It took me a couple days to get used to, but overall I was able to type relatively fast, though I will admit I'm still faster on a touchscreen keyboard. The keys are much improved from the ones that you found on the BlackBerry Priv last year, so that is a really good sign. The keyboard also has some features such as a backlight that is built in, so if you're typing in the dark, that works out very nicely. It also serves as a trackpad, so just from gliding your hand along the keyboard, you can scroll through your Twitter feed, your Facebook feed, notes, and stuff like that. Despite it being very useful and accurate for the most part, I would have liked to see a better palm rejection, perhaps not having the sensor activated on the outermost keys because a lot of times if I was holding the phone, I found myself accidentally resting my finger along the side of the key, making the trackpad function kind of inconsistent when I was trying to scroll. Similar to the dedicated shortcut button found below the volume rockers, you can also set certain keys as shortcuts by holding them for a few seconds and they're completely customizable. When it comes to the software, this ships with Android 7.1 Nougat and it is for the most part like stock Android but it does have a bit of a Blackberry skin to it. Even on pre-production software for the most part of my usage, it was actually quite reliable but I did just get an update a couple days ago so I decided to wait on my review just so I can give you a better impression of the experience. This phone does come ship with a lot of BlackBerry apps, including BlackBerry Hub, which puts all of your notifications in one place if that's what you would like. And unlike last year, I think BlackBerry Hub works very nicely, but it's something that I just haven't found myself using that much. 
Additionally, some other software things you're going to find on this include Detect by BlackBerry, which kind of walks you through the security experience of this phone and how to optimize it. Whether it comes to data encryption, your screen lock, your apps and permissions, device hardware operating system, and it just tries to give you a security score for how you set up your phone. Once again, for business people, this is something that could be important to you. On paper, the Snapdragon 625 processor might be a bit unappealing, but this phone also doesn't come in at a flagship price, so that's something you're going to have to keep in mind. Referencing that to the stutters that I noticed, I don't think it has anything to do with the processor whatsoever because the Snapdragon 625 is still more than capable, but instead, the software just needs a bit of a tune-up. Otherwise, it's Android 7.1, the interface is great, and I don't think anyone is going to have any complaints of the software, so a great job by BlackBerry for that. But onto the camera, this is one of the pleasant surprises of this phone. You've got a 12 megapixel Sony IMX378 sensor with an f2.0 aperture, which is the same one as the Google Pixel, which had me very excited. The Pixel, in my opinion, has the best camera on the market, and it's just crazy how this phone, at this price point especially, has that. You can also record 4K video, and on the front you have an 8 megapixel front-facing camera. So looking at the photos, I can tell you that this definitely has a characteristic of the Google Pixel. The dynamic range is impressive, perhaps the best that I've ever seen on a smartphone, of course aligned with the Google Pixel. Additionally, the camera was also sharp, did a very good job in balancing colors, and the way it judged lighting was very reliable, which is what contributes to the good dynamic range. For photos, it still has a punch to it, but it doesn't have that over-processed look that I'm personally not a big fan of. The low-light performance for photos was also top-notch. As for the front-facing camera, it was nothing impressive in my opinion. 4K video recording was solid, but I found that the colors were a bit oversaturated and had an over-processed look to it, but despite that, it was still sharp and pretty good looking. One thing that I noticed though is that the stabilization on the camera isn't that great. But generally speaking, the photo results from the BlackBerry Key 1 were impressive and I'm very happy to see that. With a 3,505 milliamp hour battery, a less than 1080p display, and a Snapdragon 625 processor, I expected the battery life to be impressive, and it was. I had this phone with my second SIM in it for about two weeks, and I was able to easily get about five to six hours of screen on time every single day. This is really good to see, especially with this phone being geared towards those who communicate a lot. So whether you're tweeting, sending emails, text messages, or calling, those are things that take up quite a bit of battery, so it's good that you can get through an entire day. You've also got Quick Charge 3.0, so you can top this thing off at any time during the day very quickly. Lastly, you have a mono speaker on the bottom that I found was loud for calls, and there is also a dedicated speakerphone key on the keyboard, so for conference calls, it's perfectly fine. You've also got a noise cancelling mic built in which worked very well from my uses, but you can't expect to find a stereo or dual front facing speaker on a phone that isn't geared towards multimedia in any way. So now it's time to wrap things up, and I know a lot of people are going to just pass off this phone as if it wasn't made for multimedia, which it isn't, but in what it's set out to do and what BlackBerry has intended for this, I think they've done an impressive job. Design-wise, you have the perfect approach for what a businessman would expect out of it. You've got a rugged phone that has aluminum edges and also a soft touch back based on its rubber construction. And the design is rather muted but still elegant and bold in a way. Additionally, the rear-facing camera was a great surprise. You've also got Android 7.1 Nougat. And lastly, everything is capped off with a great battery life, which is once again something that you're going to want if you're going to be communicating a lot during the day. Otherwise, at $550 unlocked for a business person, a government worker, or just BlackBerry enthusiasts out there who have been waiting for BlackBerry's great comeback, I think this is a phone for you and you're going to love it. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and also subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next one.